Al Pacino. American actor. Al Pacino born, April 25, 1940, age 83 years, East Harlem, New York, United States. Al Pacino children, Julie Marie Pacino, Olivia Pacino, Anton James Pacino, Roman Pacino. Al Pacino height, 1.68 meters. Al Pacino parents, Sal Pacino, Rose Gerard Pacino. Al Pacino siblings, Roberta Pacino, Desiree Pacino, Paula Pacino, Josep Pacino. Al Pacino alma mater, actor studio, HB studio. Al Pacino about. Alfredo James Pacino is an American actor. Considered one of the greatest and most influential actors of the 20th century, Pacino has received numerous accolades, including an Academy Award, two Tony Awards, and two Primetime Emmy Awards achieving the triple crown of acting. What is Al Pacino's net worth in 2024? According to Celebrity Net Worth, Al Pacino has a net worth of $120 million in 2024. He has earned this fortune mainly through his acting work but also through his work as a film director and producer. Wow. Al Pacino Early Life Alfredo James Pacino was born in the East Harlem neighborhood of Manhattan, New York City, on April 25, 1940, the only child of Sicilian-Italian-American parents Rose, Ney Girardi, and Salvatore Pacino, two his parents divorced when he was two years old. Two he then moved with his mother to the South Bronx to live with her parents, Kate and James Girardi, who were Italian emigrants from Corleone. One to two Pacino's father was from San Fratello and moved to work as an insurance salesman and restaurateur in Covina, California. In his teenage years, Pacino was known as a sonny to his friends. He had ambitions to become a baseball player and was also nicknamed the actor. He attended Herman Ritter Jr. High School, but soon dropped out of most of his classes except for English. He subsequently attended the High School of Performing Arts after gaining admission by audition. His mother disagreed with his decision and, after an argument, he left home. To finance his acting studies, Pacino took low-paying jobs as a messenger, busboy, janitor, and postal clerk, as well as once working in the mailroom for commentary. Pacino began smoking and drinking at age 9 and used marijuana casually at age 13, but he abstained from hard drugs. Nine his two closest friends died from drug abuse at the ages of 19 and 30. Eight growing up in the South Bronx, Pacino got into occasional fights and was considered somewhat of a troublemaker at school. Six he acted in basement plays in New York's theatrical underground but was rejected as a teenager by the actor's studio. Pacino joined the HB studio, where he met acting teacher Charlie Lawton, who became his mentor and best friend. In this period, he was often unemployed and homeless, and sometimes slept on the street, in theaters, or at friends' houses. In 1962, Pacino's mother died at the age of 43. 10 The following year, his maternal grandfather also died. Pacino recalled it as the lowest point of his life and said, I was 22 and the two most influential people in my life had gone, so that sent me into a tailspin. After four years at HB Studio, Pacino successfully auditioned for the Actors Studio. The Actors Studio is a membership organization of professional actors, theater directors, and playwrights in the Hell's Kitchen neighborhood of Manhattan. Pacino studied method acting under acting coach Lee Strasberg, who appeared with Pacino in the films The Godfather Part II and In and Justice for All. During later interviews he spoke about Strasberg and the studio's effect on his career. The Actors Studio meant so much to me in my life. Lee Strasberg hasn't been given the credit he deserves. Next to Charlie, it sort of launched me. It really did. That was a remarkable turning point in my life. It was directly responsible for getting me to quit all those jobs and just stay acting. 15 In another interview he added, It was exciting to work for him, Lee Strasberg, because he was so interesting when he talked about a scene or talked about people. One would just want to hear him talk, because things he would say you'd never heard before. He had such a great understanding, he loved actors so much. In 2000, Pacino was co-president, along with Ellen Burstyn and Harvey Keitel, of the Actors Studio. Al Pacino Personal Life Marriages and Relationships Pacino has four children. The eldest, Julie Marie, born October 16, 1989, is his daughter with acting coach Jan Tarrant. He has twins, son Anton James and daughter Olivia Rose, born January 25, 2001, with actress Beverly D'Angelo, with whom he had a relationship from 1997 until 2003. He has a son, Roman, born June 15, 2023, with his producer girlfriend Nor Alfala, who is 54 years younger than he is. Pacino, at age 83, is one of the oldest fathers on record. He has never been married. 
Pacino had a relationship with his The Godfather trilogy co-star Diane Keaton. Their on-again, off-again relationship ended after the filming of The Godfather Part 3. Keaton said of Pacino, Al was simply the most entertaining man. To me, that's, that is the most beautiful face. I think Warren Beatty was gorgeous, very pretty, but Al's face is like whoa. Killer, killer face. He has had relationships with Jill Clayburg, Tuesday Weld, Martha Keller, Varushka von Lendorf, Kathleen Quinlan, Lyndall Hobbs, and Penelope and Miller Pacino had a 10-year relationship with Argentine actress Lucila Pollock from 2008 to 2018. Al Pacino Stage Career Pacino in the play The Basic Training of Pavlo Hummel in 1977 In 1967, Pacino spent a season at the Charles Playhouse in Boston, performing in Clifford Odette's Awake and Sing. His first major paycheck, 125 US dollars a week, and in Jean-Claude Van Italy's America Hurrah. He met actress Jill Clayburgh on this play. They had a five-year romance and moved back together to New York City. In 1968, Pacino starred in Israel Horowitz's The Indian Once the Bronx at the Astor Place Theater, playing Murph, a street punk. The play opened January 17, 1968, and ran for 177 performances. It was staged in a double bill with Horowitz's It's Called the Sugar Plum, starring Clayburgh. Pacino won an Obie Award for Best Actor for his role, with John Cazale winning for Best Supporting Actor and Horowitz for Best New Play. Martin Bregman saw the play and became Pacino's manager, a partnership that became fruitful in the years to come, as Bregman encouraged Pacino to do The Godfather, Sir Pico, and Dog Day Afternoon. About his stage career, Pacino said, Martin Bregman discovered me I was 26, 25. He discovered me and became my manager. And that's why I'm here. I owe it to Marty I really do it. Pacino took the production of The Indian Once the Bronx to Italy for a performance at the Festival dei du Mondi in Spoleto. It was Pacino's first journey to Italy, he later recalled that performing for an Italian audience was a marvelous experience, Pacino and Clayburgh were cast in Deadly Circle of Violence, an episode of the ABC television series NYPD, premiering November 12, 1968. Clayburgh at the time was also appearing on the soap opera Search for Tomorrow, playing the role of Grace Bolton. Her father would send the couple money each month to help with finances. On February 25, 1969, Pacino made his Broadway debut in Don Peterson's Does a Tiger Wear a Necktie? at the Belasco Theatre, produced by A&P Air Huntington Hartford. It closed after 39 performances on March 29, 1969, but Pacino received rave reviews and won the Tony Award on April 20, 1969. Pacino continued performing on stage in the 1970s, winning a second Tony Award for the basic training of Pavlo Hummel and performing the title role in Richard III. In the 1980s, Pacino again achieved critical success on stage while appearing in David Mamet's American Buffalo, for which Pacino was nominated for a Drama Desk Award. Since 1990, Pacino's stage work has included revivals of Eugene O'Neill's Huey, Oscar Wilde's Salome and in 2005 Lyle Kessler's Orphans. In 1983, Pacino became a major donor for the Mirror Theater LTD, alongside Dustin Hoffman and Paul Newman, matching a grant from Lawrence Rockefeller. The men were inspired to invest by their connection with Lee Strasberg, as Strasberg's daughter-in-law Sabra Jones was the founder and producing artistic director of The Mirror. In 1985, Pacino offered the company his production of Huey by Eugene O'Neill, but the company was unable to do it at the time due to the small cast. 